So one of the things that the live contracts do is that it defines the logic as a finite state machine. Well, a finite state machine is a little bit different than code. It's simple logic that uh, workflows can be automated on. Let's take a door as example. Currently, we're in a specific state. The state is that the door is closed. From here, I can do one or two actions. I can open the door or I can leave it closed. If I open the door, we're getting to the next state. And in this state, I can do uh, another action. I can say I'm going to close the door or I can, I can leave it open. If I close the door, we're getting back to the initial state where the door was closed. So let's open the door again and let's bring in another actor. So once the door is open, Maurits can walk through. But when the door is closed, he cannot take that action. So the actions that you can take are actually defined by the state that you're in. So let's draw that logic out. We can define two states. The state where the door is closed and the state when the door is open. When the door is closed, I can leave the door closed. It doesn't really change the state. Or I can choose to open the door. Then it goes to a next state where the door is opened. From here, I can close the door to go back to the initial state. Or of course, I can leave it open. So let's bring in the other actor. When the door is closed, Maurits can't do anything. He can just wait here for the door. But when he's open, Maurits can uh, go through. So we can see finite state machines are an alternative to code when writing procedures. Finite state machines are used by NASA to launch rockets simply because there are only so many states you can have and so many actions you can take. So the chances on bugs or problems arising is very small. That's why we're using finite state machines for live contracts in LegalThings 1.